Yo, what up everybody? I'm Dave Miranda and this is episode 28 of Just Give Me Five. I gotta give a shout out to Wise King's Clothing. They're a local clothing brand out here definitely doing their thing and they were kind enough to lace me with one of their tees. So make sure you guys are following them on Instagram. That way you can keep up with you know, everything they got going on and support. Nothing but love and respect. Keep grinding. Keep grinding. All right. If you guys caught episode 27, though, we had none other than the homie Ill Al on. And let me tell you, when he was talking about Metro Center Mall and, you know, working there back in the day, that really took me back, man, because I specifically remember those times, man. You know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, like Metro Center, let's not even play, man. Like Metro Center had all the flyest girls. <laughs> like, like if you were trying to hook up, get numbers, that was where you went back in the day, right? Junior high, high school. And so when he was talking about the shop, man, like it just, it took me back to a time, you know? And then him speaking on how he started AOTA, you know, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. So nothing but love and respect to the homie Ill Al and make sure you guys watch episode 27. All right. But today's guest is another individual who has been a true gem to the scene for so many years now. And prior to DJing, she had a passion for basketball, and we're going to speak on that. We're also going to talk on her journey in radio and also a book she wrote. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you Miss DJ MJ. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Miss DJ MJ, and all I'm saying is just give me five. As a kid, I was courageous, I was consistent, but more so I was competitive. I loved to compete. It was all in my blood. I had a brother who was one year older than me growing up and everything he had, I wanted for some reason. So when he learned how to drive, I was learning how to drive too. And, uh, <laughs> but the most funnest part about it is that we played ball together. So when he talks about courageous, um, I played ball with a lot of boys growing up. And back in the 80s, early 90s, the, the WNBA just wasn't around. And so I had to play real hard and be really aggressive so that I could take these dudes off the court. Yeah. And so it was fun growing up. Um, I attended uh, South Mountain High School. I attended Southwest Elementary, straight Phoenix, baby. So I played a lot of basketball growing up. Shout out to the Boys and Girls Club because that's where I really got my start, especially on the weekends and especially on summers. And playing basketball, I played for many years. Actually went and played in grade school, high school, and I thought I would go off to play in college. But also growing up as a child, I loved playing the piano. My family were all musicians. My brother played the drums, my dad played the guitar, nice. and I started learning piano lessons growing up. So that really put a focus and attention on music for me. Not to mention, I got the chance to visit LA a lot, which was really fun because seeing all those lights made me, thought, made me think about wow, what could I really be growing up? This is bigger than I know. And so that was kind of cool about being a child. Growing up, I just knew that I loved basketball. But after some life decisions, I actually became anemic. I actually stopped eating red meat as a kid. And so that really changed my life. And it allowed me to refocus and revision things. And um, I always knew that it would never be work if you enjoyed it. Being the fact that I love music, I actually met a best friend by the name of Boog, and she got me into DJing first. We literally started with two CD players. We would take these to house parties. We would go to these different parties. We would play music. We didn't know how to blend or do anything. All we knew how to do was rent the music, rent the setup, and just go out there and have a good time. So it really inspired me to DJ, it was Boog. So shout out Boog. The beautiful part is that when I got to college, I decided that, hey, I'm not gonna play ball in college, but what I do wanna do is get close to the music industry. And so when I first got to college, I got in radio and that pushed my inspiration even further. Once I got into radio and how I got in is a more important story. But DJing wise, um, I knew that you had to have two jobs in radio in order to really keep, your, really keep your position, really keep your brand, you had to do multiple things because ultimately the radio station, you can get hired one day and get, you know, let go the next. But if you had all these tools under your belt, you were able to ultimately stay there and weather storms and even come back from them. So the DJing thing, 
I saw Fashion doing it, I saw Mikey Mike doing it, and yeah. I saw Nick Knack doing it, and I was like, man, I know music. I played the piano as a kid. Right. I can do this. And so I went after it. From there, I ended up actually getting my first big, I, I, I bought some turntables after I got in radio because going from CD players, like I said, with Boog, yeah. and then <laughs> switching that up to turntables was quite the hugest difference in the world. It's a different feel. And so ended up getting my first set of Technique turntables, ended up getting my first few records, ended up just getting some practice in and starting out. I got a phone call from Carly Hustle, and uh, I had already been in radio at this time. She asked me to cover someone else's shift, and I think that was one of the, my greatest uh, experiences in radio, kind of seeking opportunity and being there when someone needed it. So after covering someone's shift, that shift became my show by nature. That DJ must have went out there and just found a gig during that hour. And this hour was a Saturday night hour. Prime spot for me, I thought, between 10 and 1 a.m., 10 p.m., 1 a.m. And that was really where my DJ career ultimately took a huge turn. So I got into radio because I just, I knew I had a passion for music and I knew I couldn't work at the, at the record label. And so I told my mom this, I actually started communicating with her about it. Like, mom, I, I really wanna do something different. I wanna be in music. I wanna be in radio, mom, because I know this, I can get to the record label this way. And so funny story, that's how it started. That's also how it ended. So, hey, the beginning of the end, but how cool, right? How, how amazing. Right. And so I got into radio because it's all in who you know. My mom had a friend who had a friend who knew Melissa the Midnight Mama Seed that happened nice. to be a Soro sister. Shout out Melissa and thank you so much because you changed my life. Nice. I actually reached out to her. I sent her an email, expressed my love and passion for music. She told me to hit up Dion and send him a resume and Madlocks too. So shout out them too because I sent them a resume and they actually gave me an opportunity to be an intern. And so right at 17 years old, when I started college, I actually became an intern at Power 92.3 at the time. Right. So that's how I got in radio. From there, I came in as a promotions person. I was ultimately the face of the radio station. So if you saw those pimped out rides, if you're playing video games on that back of that radio truck, if you saw this big old truck with these booming speakers, <laughs> <laughs> you might have seen me in that truck driving it around. We used to call that the flavor unit. We yes. handed out water. We handed out all kinds of prizes. And at that time, I was the face of radio. I love being around people. I love music. And from there, that really launched my career in radio, a little over 10 year career. I ultimately started in promotions and ended up, I would say, in more of the brains area of the radio programming. So in that light, the programming of the radio station, what you do is you, you uh, work the commercials into the songs. You pick the hottest songs on the radio station. You play those songs over and over and over again because of a lot of research that you put in. You research um, record charts. You research radio charts. You meet with a lot of artists. You meet with artists when they're first beginning. You meet with artists at the midtime of their career. You meet with OG artists. So you get to, in the programming world, as an assistant music director and as a music director and as a programming assistant. Shout out Carly Hustle, Bruce St. James, Mikey Mike. Joey Boy, I'll tell you more about that in a bit. But you get to actually really breathe and see what it feels like to program radio. From commercials, to how the shows sound, to how the music sounds. So it's quite the ultimate experience. I actually took my career from Arizona to being able to do some cool things like work with Carly Hustle in New York City at Hot 97. Nice. Got the opportunity to work at Sirius Radio, Shave 45, with Money Nails and Jay Medina. So some incredible experiences that radio took me through uh, beyond meeting cool artists, uh, beyond uh, you know, doing amazing shows. I got to work with amazing people and I would, I would be uh, forever thankful and grateful for that. One of the greatest moments I had in radio was a Hot 97 event. But I will say, shout out to Power 98.3 because through that process, I learned how to work with artists. Being able to DJ for Jeremiah, being able to DJ for Pitbull, put together powerhouses here in Arizona, put together Edge 103.9 shows here in Arizona. Yeah. Not just hip hop, alternative radio too. Right. Actually, these experiences allow me to go to New York and do some more incredible things. Shout out Carly Hustle because at Hot 97, I remember one time I got to work with her and Ebro. 
We actually, Summer Jam has everybody on it. I believe this Summer Jam that I just reached, that, that I worked on Hot 97, had Trey Songs, had uh, Nicki Minaj, had Meek Mill, Rick Ross. So Carly took me to the label, or I'm sorry, to the radio station. Carly took me to the station, and she asked, they asked that I work with DJ Khaled for that event, and he was ultimately going to headline the show, and he did. And that experience, um, this was around the time that Nicki Minaj said, no, I'm not doing the station because of some of, so, I'm not doing the concert because of some of the things that happened and some things that were said yeah. that she just didn't like, right? right? And so, but that opportunity allowed me to really work at one of the biggest concerts in the world. And so shout out Carly Hustle. I'll never forget that experience from seeing DJ Khaled run around on his phone everywhere, <laughs> yeah. from seeing um, Rick Ross and Meek Mill standing right in front of me in genuine conversations, from being able to walk them from interview to interview, and things that they had to get done backstage uh, right before they went on stage. One of the greatest experiences I've ever had and been able to see. I believe uh, the, the stage punched in that year. So basically the stage itself, it was so lit that it just kind of caved in and it was a pretty cool experience. So I wrote this book. Having all that experience in radio, I knew that as I exited and thought about how else I could serve and really give um, what I had known to people, I wrote a book. And it was really for artists about how to get their song on the radio. I had seen so many different things and listened to so many different records on the radio station as we decided what to play, when to play it. And one of the biggest things I wanted to do was help out artists because I had seen artists that were super dope lyrically, but they didn't, they didn't understand marketing or how to go and connect with people. I had seen artists that weren't as dope lyrically, but they were able to have a high rotation record and they, they were, we were able to spin it a lot. So I saw a discrepancy in how songs were being played. I wanted to share that with people. I wanted to get, help people have the chance to get their song on the radio and pursue their passion and dreams. And so I wrote a book about it. The book really talks about how to get your song on the radio. It's called Ammunition for Radio Submission. You can find it on Amazon right now. The first thing I wanna do as I talk about the book is shout out my spouse, Anjali Patel, who was ultimately the editor <laughs> of the book. But I do gotta say, James Dryden, thank you so much. Cordero uh, Echoes, Echoes, thank you so much. And shout out Chaos, because the look of this book really draws an attention on, on just the principles of how to do this, how to get your song on the radio. In that book, you'll find some amazing things. One of the first things in radio that you have to know, and one of the first things being the musician that you have to know, is that it's all about relationships. Your boss could be your first intern. You're, you're, it's all about relationships. So if you go out, get out there and you make great relationships with people, genuine relationships with people, you have a great chance of getting your song on radio than versus, versus not knowing somebody. That's one, that's one of the cool principles about this book. It really draws you through on a few things you can hone into to really get your song played and get your song out there. Now, a lot has changed since I wrote this book, but a lot of the foundation of this book still remains. So I hope you get to check this book out. It was inspired by Bruce St. James, Carly Hustle, Mikey Mike, the people that I got to work with. It was inspired by the experiences that I got to see um, that I want to share with you. So definitely, if you get a chance, check it out, if not for yourself or someone you love. I feel like the greatest currency in the world is love. And to have love and to give love, I think that there's nothing beyond greater than that. So to know that I'm loved makes me feel super blessed and it makes me feel like I'm doing my responsible duties on this earth. Giving, to me, is love. And so as long as I keep giving, however it is, ultimately, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the love that's right here, the light too. So I wanna shout out my family. I wanna shout out all my friends. If I had the chance to work with you in some way, shape, or form, know that you changed my life. I wanna, I thank God for the, all the opportunities. Shout out Anjali, you're my everything. Thank you all so much for being in my life. Um, if I had to list names out, I'd be doing the list forever because my life has been forever changed because each of every one of you watching this, even up until this point. So thank you so much. 
And uh, thank you for allowing me the chance to, to share my five with you. And there you have it. Nothing but love and respect to Miss DJ MJ. You know, one of the kindest human beings I've ever known. And she gave me a copy of her book. So like she said, hit it up on Amazon.com. That way you can support what she's got going as well. Make sure you guys are following her on social media. Shout out to my brother Jimmy Nelson on that camera. If you guys are watching this, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This was really, really dope. And until uh, next time, stay tuned, stay blessed, stay healthy. Just give me five, y'all. Yeah.